Hello and welcome to Smart Money, brought to you by Daily Investor, South Africa's biggest online investment publication. Today, we get into the outlook for global fixed income with Paul Carr, who's co-portfolio manager of the newly launched 91 Global Diversified Income Fund. And Paul... Thanks so much for joining us today. I want to take quite a step back here because today presenting a very different picture to the one we were looking at post-global financial crisis, right, where central bank monetary easing took interest rate policy to the effective lower bound with very different implications for investors looking for returns on their cash savings, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, And thanks for having me here today. It, it, going back to the global financial crisis was a very difficult time. Ultimately, central banks, one way in, in order to achieve growth and inflation, um, they really needed to get investors out of cash and into riskier assets. So ultimately, we really saw those interest rates come down. We got interest rates down to in the US at 0.125%. And even in Europe, post um, the, the COVID crisis, we reached negative interest rates. And negative interest rates penalize investors. Clearly, you can't leave money in an account because actually you've got to pay the bank. So what it really did is force investors down into riskier assets. And there was a period of having been through low growth, low inflation, where basically free money was pumped into the system and people were forced to find riskier assets to get higher income on their investments. Okay, so that the then, right? Flash forward to now, are we simply returning to the old normal in global interest rates as we see central bankers globally adjust to a very different set of economic conditions that are now in play? Yeah, we you know, we 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 are now faced with a very different set of circumstances. I mean, we think we go back to the last 3 years. Currently, we're sitting with very high inflation, although it is coming down. We've been through an extremely high period of inflation. And, you know, in our view, it's been caused by some significant structural changes that we've seen in in the economy. First of all, we had, you know, the significant um, issue of the war in Europe. And this has led to massive structural um, changes in global supply chains around the world. And some of those things are never going to come back to the way they were before. Then we've had the energy security impact that that's had. The whole war has meant that we're now we're thinking about the supply of energy on a, on a country by country basis. And that really means there's a lot more capital being committed to green investment, which is boosting you know, investment around the globe. And then we had the global um, pandemic. I mean, this was a huge, significant shift in behaviors and lifestyles forever. We're never likely to go back to that pre that behavioral period of pre-COVID. Um, so ultimately, central banks, having had all of this thrown at the economy, saw just inflation rapidly picking up. And initially, the central banks kind of looked through it, thought it was trend- transitory, but re- realizing quite rapidly, this is becoming a problem. And ultimately, that's led to a massive shift in uh, interest rates um, uh, in the economy. What we think is different also this time is because of the massive amount of quantitative easing that we've seen since the global financial crisis, that is being reversed. And these massive um, balance sheets that central banks have are finally coming down. And what that means is the cost of money, interest rates, the cost of that that, um, money in the system is rising significantly. So we think this is a big structural change. That period post the global financial crisis is not something we're going back to. We really think we're kind of going back to the old normal of interest rates that we saw before the global financial crisis. And while you talk of, you know, on the one end, central bank authorities having to battle against uh, the new economic situation we find ourselves in, you've got conservative investors perhaps relieved that they can now move away from those riskier investments that you cited at the top and achieve attractive returns for limited additional risk right now. So spell that out for us. I mean, what does this mean for yield? Yeah, absolutely. And we, we we think this environment is really attractive for relatively conservative dollar investors. And they, they can move down, come down that um, that risk return profile and move into more defensive income at the front end. When we think about um, uh, cash rates at the moment at 5%, I and mean, when we haven't had levels you know, interest rates at 5% in, in close to 20 years or so, 
um, uh, certainly where they currently are at the moment in the US. So this is significant change. And it means you can get additional income just on your cash savings by being wiser and investing it in attractive, you know, defensive um, uh, investments out there. And we think this is an opportune time for conservative investors to move into that global income space that we haven't yeah. had for because I guess more importantly, so you're holding the view, uh, Paul, that global disinflation that we're starting to see right now will provide a strong tailwind that will continue to support fixed income prices into the future. So take us through uh, that line of thinking and, you know, some of the uh, factors that are currently in place supporting that view. Of course. No, we, we as I mentioned before, we've had the, all these structural changes impacts in the economy over the last few years. And central banks have obviously restricted policy to some extent, and that is helping bring inflation down. We've seen energy prices come down and we're starting to see food prices come down. And that really is helping that global disinflation phase come through in the economy. And we think that is a, a really attractive support for global fixed income, in particular at the, that front end of the curve where you can get additional income. And we think that's quite an attractive um, proposition for investors. But clearly, it also means that central banks aren't going to be cutting interest rates relatively quickly, because actually growth is quite firm. We don't see any major risk of recession, I think, on the horizon, which means central banks' policy rates have been high. They may come down a little bit, but they're going to be at a relatively high level for some time. And that offers a really attractive income, we think, for, for underlying investors. Okay, so all of that being said and context laid, wrap it all up for us. How are these views coming to bear on your portfolio positioning right now? Because you're targeting returns of what, one and a half percent above US dollar, but you want to maintain um, a defensive stance as you, you know, as you venture into all of this. Absolutely. So for us, without having to take too much risk by extending our, you know, income further out, our, our duration out. We can actually get attractive income in a very in a very narrow period in in like a low risk one to two year basis. So we think actually cash income, uh, cash plus income for these type of products is very attractive. So we we our, our portfolio at the moment has actually quite low risk, um, but it also has very attractive cash income in that in, in that portfolio space, close to 100 to 150 basis points over cash. And we know that cash is around about five, five and a quarter percent in the US. So overall, very attractive yields. But we don't think um, we need to take that much credit risk. So overall, we've got uh, we've got an attractive array of growth assets within the portfolio, but they're, but they're relatively low, uh, low volatility. They're quite defensive assets, but that give you that extra cash kicker. But we also think, you know, FX currency is still an attractive uh, asset allocation, or certainly uh, a characteristic to have in the portfolio. So we we still quite like being overweight US dollars, having a long US dollar exposure in the portfolio. That adds to a little bit of um, diversification and attractiveness, keeping the defensive characteristics. But the overall portfolio actually has quite a low risk, but an attractive um, cash uh, cash income stance in that portfolio, mainly because, as I mentioned, that yield curve being inverted means you don't need to extend risk. You don't need to take risk out there. Keep it relatively yeah. low, relatively short dated, and that offers quite an attractive return for underlying investors. Well, Paul, it's been a pleasure catching up with you today. Thanks so much for that. Paul Carr is co-portfolio manager of the 91 Global Diversified Income Fund. Thank you.